1920. It's Saturday, and you're getting ready for a hot date. So you decide to go get a manicure. In 1920, that would have cost you 25 cents. You also decide to go get your hair done, which would have cost you $2. Now that you're looking snazzy, it's time to go on that date with your dapper gentleman, and it's looking like dinner and a movie. The average dinner meal in 1920 would have cost 70 cents, and the movie tickets, they would have been 15 cents a piece. So for a night out on the town in 1920, you would have spent $3.25. Now, let's compare that to today. 100 years later, the cost of going out on a date on a Saturday night would cost you $123. This is called inflation. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how it works and everything you need to know about it so that you don't wake up one day and find that all the money that you've saved is worth next to nothing. Hey guys, I'm Amy Sangster. And if you're new here, this channel is all about creating financial freedom. So if you're into that, I would love for you to subscribe. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about a hot topic in the financial industry right now, inflation. And yes, this is a topic that is highly politicized Anyway, but I'm going to ignore the politics and break it down as simply as I can so that you can understand it and make smart financial decisions. Because here's the thing, inflation has a massive effect on your financial future and your ability to build wealth. I'm going to explain why. And at the end of the video, I'll share how you can protect your money from inflation. But first, we need to talk about how inflation works. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Put simply, inflation is the rise in the costs of goods and services in an economy over time. Generally speaking, this occurs when there is more money being spent in the economy than there are products and services being made. In other words, people are spending more money and businesses cannot keep up with the demand, which in turn forces them to raise their prices. So on a small scale, this is a natural process and a healthy sign that the economy is growing. However, there is this thing called the inflation rate that we need to consider. The inflation rate is the percentage change in the price index for a given period compared to that recorded in a previous period. It's usually calculated on a year-on-year -year or an annual basis. When the inflation rate is lower, it means the price of things are rising at a slower rate. And when the inflation rate is higher, it means the price of things are raising at a faster rate. Now, according to the Federal Reserve, a healthy inflation rate is around 2%. This allows people to make sound decisions regarding saving, borrowing, and investing, which contributes to a well-functioning economy. So if the inflation rate was 2%, that would mean that something that cost a dollar this year would cost $1.02 next year. Currently, the inflation rate in the United States is around 7% and rising, which is why you're hearing about this in the news. The inflation number, bad. it was not a good number. Of course we do this worse. backdrop of inflation. And now this leads me to my next question. And you might be asking yourself, why is inflation rising so quickly right now? To explain this, let's use an example. Let's say the economy is made up of one town with one store. Everyone in town goes to this store to buy the things that they need. Now, let's say that one day a disease takes over the town. People are scared. They have to stop working and are forced to stay home. The government that runs the town is afraid that people are going to stop spending money and collapse the economy. So they send people a stimulus check so people are incentivized to continue to spend their money. They also lower interest rates so businesses are incentivized to take out loans and continue to build their business. So now that people have more money that they wouldn't have had otherwise, they feel more comfortable to buy things. So they go to the store and they stop buying things that they wouldn't have been able to justify previously. Kids are buying new Xboxes, your friends friend's mom got a new Peloton, and you got yourself a brand new set of monochrome ceramic pans for your kitchen. However, with all this new spending, the store is having trouble keeping up with the demand and keeping themselves stocked. But remember, everyone has had to stay at home because of the lockdown, so businesses are not able to produce products at a normal rate. Because of this, the cost of producing goods becomes more expensive, and the store has to raise its prices to try and curb the rate at which people are buying things. Now, if you haven't caught on yet, this is exactly what happened in the world recently. When recent events shut down the world, governments gave us money, free money. Here in the US, they literally sent out $3,200 checks. They gave us 600 bucks a week to people who were unemployed for months and months and months. They gave subsidies to people with kids. They increased spending on food stamps. I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars of stimulus money. This was vital aid to people in need, but even people who didn't lose a job got a check in the mail. It was free money for everyone and almost everyone spent it. The flip side is that now there is a shortage of products. Housing costs have gone up with the demand and there are a shortage of microchips, which is making cars and tech products more expensive. And the price of gas has skyrocketed. So that's inflation in a nutshell but here's why this all matters. Inflation impacts income, and it makes the cost of money more expensive. In other words, you need to have more money in future in order to maintain the same lifestyle you would have otherwise been able to currently. This is due to this thing called purchasing power. 
Let me explain. Over the past 30 years, inflation has averaged around 2.5% annually. That means a retiree who needs $50,000 of income to cover their yearly expenses would actually need around 80,000 in 20 years to maintain that same purchasing power. And that's if the inflation rate stays the same at 2.5%. If inflation spikes sooner though, that person who wants to maintain the same lifestyle would need to spend even more money. Explained in another way. Let's say you have $100,000 invested. If inflation rises at 10% and your investment only increases by 3% per year, then everything is 7% more expensive on a relative basis. Hence, your purchasing power is 7% less. So what does this all mean? This means that if you wanna reach financial freedom and have the ability to retire, you need to invest your money and not just save it. Now, if you're someone that is maybe scared to invest right now and you feel like saving is the smarter option, check out the difference between my hypothetical friends, Sally and Cindy. Now they're both 60 years old, but they started saving $500 per month at 20 years old. Cindy was smart and she invested the money that she saved at a 7% annual rate of return. While Sally simply deposited her money into a savings account at the 2% annual rate of return. By the way, for all the skeptics out there, a 7% annual return is not unrealistic. The 20 year return on the S&P 500 index is 9.645% per year or 6.9% adjusted for inflation and dividends. Anyway, 40 years later, this is the difference. Cindy is retiring with almost $1.2 million, whereas Sally is left with just 370,000, which assuming she lives 30 more years, gives her about $12,000 per year to live off versus the $48,000 per year Cindy has assuming that she sticks to the standard 4% withdrawal rate. So the point, investing is crucial. The earlier you start, the better off you'll be thanks to compound interest. Now, this is especially true when you consider inflation. Because if you're only saving money and putting cash into a savings account, that cash is literally losing value year after year. And sure, that might not sound like a big deal over just a few years, but in 20 or 30 years, that has a massive impact. By the way, if you're like me and think that the thought of living off of 48,000 per year at retirement doesn't sound so fun, now is the time to start thinking about increasing the amount that you're able to invest. And no, I don't mean forgoing your morning coffee and recycling your paper towels today so that you can stash away just a little bit more for tomorrow. No, I'm a huge believer that like attracts like, and living in a state of lack today attracts more lack tomorrow. So when we look at the variable that we can play with that has no limit, it's income earned versus saving, which has a limit. At the end of the day, we can only ever save so much but income, that's unlimited. That's why in this YouTube video, I cover the top five side hustles anyone can start in 2023 so that you can break out of the one job, one income model and actually make strides toward a future that excites you. In my previous example, if Cindy watched my YouTube video, hit the like button, you know, subscribe to the channel and invested an extra $500 per week, she'd be retiring with 2.4 million instead of 1.2 million meaning she'll be able to live off 96,000 per year in retirement using the 4% withdrawal rule. Now, if Cindy really wants to bowl out now and in retirement and watches the free course that Daniel Leslie and I put together on how to generate recurring revenue and starts a member up community with 500 members at $50 per month, she has an extra 25,000 a month in income to play with. She doesn't settle. She wants abundance now and abundance later. So she takes 15,000 to use now and invests 10,000 a month for retirement. In 40 years, she's retiring with close to 24 million and lives off 960,000 per year using the 4% withdrawal method. She also does all of this through tax advantage accounts to maximize what she keeps and minimize Uncle Sam's cut. Now, let me know if you'd like a video on tax advantage accounts and we can definitely make that happen. So at the end of the day, the best thing that you can do is start taking action now and creating a plan to take control of your finances and start building wealth. Saving is never going to make you rich and factoring in inflation, you're actually going backward. If you want more tips like these to learn and earn more, check out my newsletter. I share more in-depth breakdowns and tips and it's totally free. I hope you found this video helpful and if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. By the way, if you've been following along this channel, you'll know that I was giving away $1,000 to celebrate the relaunch of it. All you had to do to enter was comment on all of the previous four videos and like and subscribe. So now I'm gonna choose the winner of the $1,000 and if I pick you, be sure to contact me on Instagram and I will get you your money. So we have chosen Wild and Well Nutrition Coaching. 
She said, I definitely want to pursue memberships this year and will definitely look into member up. Thanks for the info slash inspo. I'm tired of trying to get new clients and really looking towards a more sustainable and lucrative model for my coaching business. Thanks again. Oh, and I'd love a video on how to create and build a larger audience. The fear of trying a membership model and having one member. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so you have won $1,000. Please contact me on Instagram. I will get you paid. And also for anyone else that feels similar, know that within member up, there is a free course that Danielle Leslie and I put together to show you how to avoid being in that situation where you only have one member, how to build an audience and actually how to get paid and validate your idea before you've even created the content. So go and jump on that. And for now, I will see you next week. Thank you.